so you just got yourself a compact Mac. Congratulations. You have a rather fun looking machine. Um, not really all that fast, but anyways, um, to the eye of the, be eye of the beholder. But, uh-oh, your Mac has a problem. Either your operating system is very, 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 very bungled up, or your hard drive is dead, or the drive itself could have just been simply wiped. So you need to get an operating system onto this thing. Now, of course, you do have a floppy drive on this thing, so we could do an install like that with the floppy disks. All six or seven or a whole bunch of them. And if you have an 800K drive, you can forget having to write the disks with the PC because it's just not worth it. As for CD booting, say off something like this, forget it. Machines this old won't be able to boot off a CD drive, even over SCSI. It's just way too difficult. However, these Macs here have two things going for them. One, they have a programmer switch, and two, they have a SCSI port. So technically, if you were to lock up the machine somehow, you would be able to have full access to the hard drive through another machine, because all you're doing here is supplying power to the drive, and you're breaking out the hard drive connection, or in SCSI, to the rear port. And I thought about this, and I tested with a couple of different combinations, and I found out, yes, you can actually do that. So, let's go and install System 7 onto a Mac here, which has, uh, well, a very dead install of System 7. Now, in this particular case here, I'm actually using a Macintosh SE FDHD, or SuperDrive, depending on how you want to call it. But this is our SCSI connection right here. 25 pins, has this little icon on it. Very easy to identify. Programmer switch, however, is a little bit more difficult. It's an option, or usually it's included with the uh, Macintosh SE, for a little tiny switch that connects right over here, just kind of clips on. Some people never even bother to install it, and it typically gets lost, but you can still reach the buttons using a straightened paper clip. And all you have to do to find the interrupt button, which we're going to use in this case here, is poke through the first, second, third, fourth, fifth hole. And the button is right there for you to push. Now, unfortunately, you can't use just any Mac to do the, run the setup on this Macintosh here. Instead, we need something that doesn't use the SCSI controller primarily. There's two reasons for this. One is that SCSI ID 0 is generally, res is generally reserved for the main or lone system disk in a Macintosh. Now, if there's more than one drive in there, or, you think, or if you've messed around in there, you might have changed the address. But it'll always be, it almost, it's, it's almost always ID 0, basically. And you can change that around so that the host Mac is ID1 and this is ID0 still, but one thing you cannot change is that the SCSI controllers are typically hard set to ID7. You cannot have the SE and your other Macintosh using the same SCSI address for the controllers. What happens if you don't change them? Or, well, what happens if they are the same? Nothing works. You won't even be able to boot the other machine. So we need something that uses well, SCSI as its secondary mass storage option. PowerBooks are a fantastic device that can do this. And in fact, this Main Street here has the ability to not only have the SCSI controller address set something differently, again, this is IDE based. So we aren't using the SCSI bus at all to boot. So I don't have to worry about ID0 at all. One thing we do need to get a hold of, however, is one of these adapters here. They're micro dock adapters, but it's just simply twitching them between target disk mode on and off. It takes the PowerBook SCSI connector and breaks it out to the 25 pin connector that most Macs use because 50 pin was apparently just too difficult for Apple. But anyways, so let's get this all set up and wired up. It's really not all that difficult and um, we'll bring up the machine. So once you have all your wiring set up here, go ahead and turn on your compact Mac. The moment you get to the cursor, I want you to hit the interrupt button. You're going to get a sad Mac displaying on the screen, but that's totally okay. Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to halt the system and prevent it from doing anything with the SCSI bus while we're working on it. This just prevents that during the installation process or anything like that. It might say, oh, suddenly I have a valid system folder and starts to boot it and cause all sorts of problems. But basically, yeah, now it's in a state where we can now directly access it from another machine. So... We would, for example, now turn on our power book here. And that might take a moment to come up. One thing I don't warn you about is that if you do still have a somewhat usable system file on the Compact Mac, 
the power book is immediately going to try and boot it either way, and it's going to freak out because, well, it cannot do that. What we have to do in that case there is that we have to plug, kind of, well, we have to hot plug the SCSI connection so that the operating system on the power book can boot first, and then we can assert control over for controlling the SCSI bus. Now, there probably is a key, a key combination to do this, but I just don't remember it, and I'm lazy. Now, depending on whether or not the system um, tried to boot the PowerBook off the, Mac, the Compact Mac, you may or may not see a mounted volume over in the corner here underneath your regular hard drive and whatever. But um, if we're going to do a complete format or a reinstall or something like that, well, we have to format it anyways. Now, there is two options you can use. There's Apple's HDSC setup, or there's the later Apple uh, drive setup. Now, there is stuff like Silver Lining and the HD Toolkit, but personally, I prefer Apple's uh, drivers because really, it doesn't matter about performance when you're working on a compact Mac. Uh, just one warning, or two warnings. First off, um, the formatters are a little bit different than each other. HDSC setup is very, very picky about formatting, and that is, if there's any errors occur that happen during the formatting or verification, it will just say the disk is absolutely useless. Drive setup is a little bit more forgiving and will actually let you format drives which H, uh, HDSC setup will not let you format. The other thing is, is that you might or might not be able to see this in the resolution of this video, but these are both marked as patched. Well, what does that mean? Well, just like how um, Apple today doesn't let certain devices um, operate with their machines, back then was kind of the case too, still when uh, SCSI was hit and miss. And there was a list included with the disk utilities which allowed um, certain models of drives to be formatted, especially if they were um, rebranded by Apple. Now, there's a little way you can go through ResKit here, and you can actually um, override that entire list that the utilities have included, in with, included with them. So you can then essentially format any drive. And, well, that's what I use here. In this situation here, we don't see a mounted volume. That's probably because my system is very, very screwed. So I'm going to run drive setup here. And it'll look for a drive. It might blink the LED on the Compact Mac. There it did. It blinked it. So it probed the bus, but is the disk actually visible? Is it usable? Yep, there it is. Um, states not mounted. And here's another little fun, fun thing. If you do actually want to recover files off your Compact Mac at this point here, you can actually mount it using Drive Setup and just select it and mount volumes or Command M. And there we go. We now actually have the hard drive sitting on the desktop over there. But I want to format this thing because I want to install an operating system on it. So I'm just going to do a quick, initial, uh, quick initialization for this here. Normally I would recommend a low-level format, and you can select that in uh, initialization options and there's low level format and zero all data but a low level format will do the exact same thing as zeroing so we're just going to initialize that and if you want a custom setup there add your partitions or all that you can do that but i really don't care about this 100 megabyte drive and i will initialize it and in this case here this disk is usable now. Uh, all 100 megabytes, 98.3 megabytes. Okay, yeah, close enough. But now, let's install the operating system. Now, you probably have a copy of the Macintosh OS available uh, that you downloaded from the Macintosh Garden, or if you're lucky like me, you actually have a uh, System 7.1 installation CD, which is uh, kind of cool. And I'm just going to run the installer from there. Um, it does have HDSC set up here, um, but it's not going to work. One, because it doesn't know what the hell an IDE controller is because it's just going to be so old. And two, it's going to have all the, that list of supported drives that we don't really want. But anyways, we'll just install the system software. And this might vary depending on which version you're installing. So, for example, if you were to have an SE30, you'll install 7.5. Um, this will also work with the Color Classic, by the way. But yes, okay. And I want to customize this. So... We're going to install our file sharing software. Uh, I'm going to shift install CD-ROM software. I don't think I need QuickTime on this. But I'm going here, and I want I want the software for the laser writer. 
Laser writer. Yeah, just the laser writer for now. I have one of those in storage. And, oh, we don't even have the laser writer too. Well, that's unfortunate. And here it is. System for Macintosh SE. So shift, we'll select that as well. And this is where it comes really fun for having to be able to do the installation on another machine like this. We don't have to deal with floppy disks. We don't have to deal with anything like that. The installation process is itself is amazingly fast. And we start. done. And now we can just quit out of that. Done. And we can now shut down the system, unplug the cabling, restart the compact Mac, and if all worked out, it'll boot right up. All right, so all the cables are out and we're all ready to restart the machine and it should boot right up. I'm going to put the paper clip into the eighth lower slot and that should hold the reset button. There we go. And is it going to boot? Right, that was my little choreography screw up right there. Um, completely forgot um, the Macintosh SE for some reason does not like drives formatted or initialized with drive setup. So I had to go back and use a HDSC setup and reinstall and everything went fine after that. Now it should work. And does it hold up at all? Ah, there it goes. Yep, it worked. And there we have it. Without the use of uh, floppy disks or external CD drives or anything like that, just another power, just a power book, a SCSI cable, and a little adapter, and some sort of installation media, we have managed to install an operating system on here that works. And now we can go back to configuring the system as we prefer, stripping out a couple of fonts which are already in ROM, and installing our software. Thank you for watching.